Government corruption has never been more prevalent or caused more harm. It's why extremism is on the rise. It's why the financial gap between the haves and have nots has never been wider. And it's why our planet is at risk of an extinction level tragedy. That's why I need your help to keep exposing the truth about the rot on both sides of the aisle. Become a supporter or a friend of the show today by clicking on the coffee link in the description box below. Friends of the show, join me on a Zoom hangout once a month, and you guys can ask me any questions you want, and I can get to know you better. But the most important reason to help is to keep the show alive. Together, we can and will save our country and our planet. Thanks in advance and enjoy the show. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Plants and Politics. So I have some news to share, a bunch of news to share about recently issued subpoenas, upcoming testimony, and judges' rulings in regard to Donald Trump investigation. First, in regard to Trump's attempted coup by way of fraudulent electors, the FBI has issued subpoenas to Arizona Senate President Karen Fan and Arizona State Senator Kelly Townsend. So these are two major election deniers. And Fan used Trump's election fraud fairy tales to justify that fraud it in Maricopa County in Arizona. She's also continued to use taxpayer money to try to hide documents related to the fraud it. I mean, it's, you know, over half a million dollars the last time I checked. The, just to block anyone from seeing any documentation. And Fan and her fellow Republicans have gone to court numerous times over this. They continue to just try to fight the Freedom of Information Act requests for documents and communications. Um, they, you know, these are watchdog groups that are filing these FOIA requests, but they just stonewalled on it. So now the feds are demanding the same information. I have a feeling it's going to be a little easier for them to obtain those items. What we do know is that Fan had told Rusty Bowers, that's the House Speaker, the Republican House Speaker who testified before the Select Committee. She told him in November of 2020 that Trump's allies had called her repeatedly asking for her help in overturning Biden's win. So you know she's got some good stuff. We also just learned that the grand jury investigating Trump's alleged crimes in Georgia um, has subpoenaed a slew of Trump's shady allies. So the grand jury subpoenas were issued to attorneys Rudy Giuliani, Kenneth Cheesebro, John Eastman, Jenna Ellis, and Cleta Mitchell, as well as U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham and a right-wing podcast host named Jackie Pick Deason. Um, so Graham says he's not going to comply. His attorney has told news outlets that they're filing a challenge with the court. They think they're going to win. I would imagine he's a bit nervous. You know, he's accused of making two calls to the Georgia Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, and asking him to throw out absentee ballots for Biden. Of course, Graham's attorney claims that, oh, my client did nothing improper. But, you know, if that's the case, then why doesn't he just go tell his side of the story? And I don't think it's going to go too great for him. I don't think he's going to get out of it because a Fulton County Superior Court judge just denied two other requests to block subpoenas in that same Georgia probe. A former Republican state senator named William Ligon and Georgia Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan both tried to get out of testifying. They cited legislative privilege and immunity. Well, the judge called bullshit on that argument. And he said in his opinion, quote, where the legislative privilege ends and the grand jury's authority to question the witnesses about possible criminal electoral interference by others begins is when a witness or his staff has engaged with private citizens on topics relevant to the grand jury's investigative charter. Because, yeah, you can't on one hand claim, oh, everything that I talked about or communicated about is privileged, it's protected under legislative privilege, but then you went and discussed those same topics with people who are not part of the government. You can't have it both ways. And you know who else has testified before the grand jury? Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. It's almost as if he's telling the truth and he has nothing to hide. Hmm. 
Um, and it was also just announced recently that Georgia Governor Brian Kemp will be testifying before the same grand jury. So he's going to be doing that via a sworn recorded statement. But if he can't claim legislative privilege, how can these other idiots claim it? So, you know, and that's going to take place this month also on July 25th. I also wanted to share news with you guys about uh, the upcoming January 6th select committee witnesses. So Donald Trump's White House counsel, Pat Cipollone, who has been, you know, his name's been used like a credit card in these hearings so far. He has agreed to meet with the committee and provide testimony, but it will be behind closed doors, at least for now. So no word yet as to whether or not he's going to appear live in some upcoming hearing. Uh, the next hearing, though, has been scheduled. It's going to be next Tuesday, July 12th, and that's going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And Trump's deputy press secretary, Sarah Matthews, is going to be one of the in-person witnesses at that Tuesday hearing. Matthews resigned on January 6th. This was following the Capitol attack. She resigned that evening and she said that she was, quote, deeply disturbed by what I saw. She also said, quote, our nation needs a peaceful transfer of power. And then more recently, after Trump minions started attacking Cassidy Hutchinson for her testimony in that last hearing. Matthews actually stepped up to side with her and she wrote on Twitter, quote, anyone downplaying Cassidy Hutchinson's role or her access in the West Wing either doesn't understand how the Trump White House worked or is attempting to discredit her because they're scared of how damning this testimony is. And then she followed up with the tweet, quote, for those complaining of hearsay, I imagine the January 6th committee would welcome any of those involved to deny these allegations under oath. Yeah, I bet they would too. I'm going to take the word of the people who have the ovaries to step up, take an oath, and sit down and face the public and tell what they know. I'm not going to trust these Trump minions like these guys in the Secret Service who were actually more like political figures who are from the sidelines saying, oh, I never said that. Oh, that's not true. Oh, that's a lie. She's lying. Really? Step up, woman up, put yourself in front of the cameras and in front of the American public. And then let's have your side of the story. Let's hear what you have to say. And then if there's other witnesses who can corroborate what she's saying, you're up a creek and you know it. And that's why these guys won't show up. That's why they won't come. They won't testify in public because they know they're full of shit. So anyway, guys, getting very interesting to say the least. Um, and it's it's funny that Matthew said, you know, anyone who says that Cassidy Hutchinson, you know, didn't have full access, didn't understand how the Trump White House works. I would imagine Trump falls into that category. I don't think he knew at all how his own White House worked. <laughs> he probably had no clue. He probably saw Cassidy Hutchinson and, you know, with as sexist and misogynistic as he is, he probably thought that she was like a waitress that worked at the White House or something. <laughs> she was like, you know, a, a gopher, uh, um, you know, she was there to to clean up after the men. Anyway, I will let you guys know when I hear more. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care. I'll talk with you soon.